today I'm doing a quick test of PrintBite Plus so I can compare that to the original PrintBite which I've already been using for quite a while and I'm really happy with but supposedly the PrintBite Plus can work with polycarbonate and I was having some trouble getting polycarbonate to stick to anything so far so I'm really hoping this could possibly be the answer to that but we shall see. So first I've got to put this on a new sheet of glass so everything has to be cleaned, of course, first, and then it needs to be cycled through to just harden up that adhesive and finalize everything. It does look like it's thinner than the original print bite, which is what I read on there. So, and it's got this nice grid, so that's cool. Let me get the glass open. So I've got a nice fresh sheet of glass. Let's just check and make sure it's about the right size. We got a couple extra millimeters on the ends, but that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the glass. Get rid of any fingerprints there. Just to make sure that we're going to get a good bond. The glass is clean and dry now. I'm going to carefully peel off the backing and stick it down one edge at a time. So I'm just going to start with an edge I know should line up because those side edges are a little bit tiny bit too wide so it's going to be easier to start with maybe the back edge. I'm going to try peeling off just part of the adhesive at a time, see how that works. That seems pretty good with getting it lined up so now I'm going to just carefully start peeling this back. Pressing it down a little bit at a time, trying not to get any air bubbles. And because it's translucent here, I can kind of see through where I'm getting good adhesion and where I'm maybe getting a little bit of air. That's pretty perfect. I don't see any major air bubbles. That wasn't too difficult. It didn't seem to want to wrinkle or anything because it is a thick enough surface, I guess. And I think that I've got a really good amount of adhesion here. It's nice and smooth onto that glass. So now that I've gotten my handprints all over it, I'm going to clean this off before doing the heat cycle that sets the adhesive. And I'm just following the instructions on the website for this product. Although I am using Windex for this step, I didn't have any industrial acetone on hand and Windex is what I've used to clean the print bite version 1 with good success so I'm just going to stick with what I know works and get off any of these fingerprints before putting this on to heat for an hour. Before I put the new one on the print bed I just want to show you in comparison this is the first version of print bite and it is a little bit thicker. This one has been used and abused for what like a year or something like that and I mean it's been through a lot because I've been experimenting with different types of filaments you know learning as I go but it still works really really well um, even though I've caused some damage to the surface just by kind of getting some flexible filament stuck on there really badly and having to pry those off but even with all of this damage it still works great it doesn't have to be replaced it's just I want to try the new version of course you don't get quite as perfectly smooth a finish when you've caused damage to the surface but I haven't found that even once you do add some scratches and stuff that it really significantly affects the performance of the product it still works really really well that's pretty impressive that um, you can you know make mistakes like that and not completely waste your money on a product some of these print surfaces you know they're temporary and as soon as you cause any sort of damage or if they just wear out then you've got to replace them but this product has continued to work despite some damage. The surface itself is just a little bit thinner now with the Print Bite Plus version. Looks nice too with this grid option, it's really nice. And then I've got the logo in there now, so it's definitely a more professional looking version now in this next iteration. So well, there's some nice improvements, and hopefully, the improvements in the adhesion for our different filaments will be worthwhile also. Just gonna slide this onto the bed now. Get that locked in place. 
This needs to go through two heat cycles for an hour, cool down, an hour again with a moistened towel on top. It's supposed to go up to 110, but the Ultimaker is only supposed to go up to 100, and I'm just doing it at 90 just to be on the safe side. I'm doing a test right now with black tea glaze, and I've got a brim. I've got my initial layer of thickness at 0.3, which is what I normally do. I'm just putting some little pieces kind of in each corner just to check check for bed leveling issues and whatnot. Well, every other setting's pretty standard. I'm doing 70 bed, 240 temp, 20 millimeters per second, just going nice and slow to give me time to catch errors as they happen. Here are those parts printing in the tea glass. I did have to adjust the bed leveling a little bit. It wasn't quite close enough to the nozzle from my initial leveling, so fixed that, and then I also just turned up the heat a little bit to make sure that these do stick, and so we're just gonna continue on with the test here. I went ahead and stopped the print just because these particular models, the way that I set them up, they weren't coming out too well. But what I'm testing here is the adhesion anyway, so that's fine. I'm just gonna leave these for a bit and see if I've got it calibrated properly to self-release. These have been sitting for over an hour now and I'm tired of waiting, so I think I probably did just a little bit too much extrusion with the way the bed was leveled, but these come off really, really easily now and they probably would have self-released if I had a little bit more patience, even though I kind of smushed them in a little bit too hard. The bottoms look pretty good. Actually, it doesn't look like I smushed it in too badly, so I think it just needed just a little bit more time to pop off. Plus, these are also just really small pieces, so there's not a whole lot of like pull on them as they're cooling. But yeah, I think that's uh, pretty nice. I'm ready to try something for real now. The next filament is going to be a type of polycarbonate. This is PC Plus by Polymaker. Very similar to the last test with the tea glaze, except that I've changed the bed to 90. Kicks the temp to 253. It's at 30, so it's pretty slow. And the first layer I did at 20, because I've had so much trouble with this not sticking in past. I'm just trying to give it every possible benefit to stick this time. It seems to be working, we shall see. Seemed to be going really well, but then I heard a funny noise from the other room. Came back to find it all popped off and just hanging off the nozzle. This looks like a really nice first layer, other than some weird little bloopy things. But I guess the next step is just to try it again with a brim this time and see if that holds. I'm trying the same thing again with the brim, but it's even worse with the brim. These little edges just won't stay stuck down, so... I'm gonna call this a no-go. I even tried turning up the material flow. I just can't turn up the build plate temperature high enough. It's supposed to be to 110, and I can't do that on the Ultimaker, so. Seems like print bite with the PC Plus on an Ultimaker is not going to work out, unfortunately. This is test three. It's glass fiber reinforced PETG by 3DX Tech. And it's doing well so far. Um, this filament always does tend to gunk up the nozzle rather a lot. So I already had to pause it to clean it. And when I first got started, it got some little oopsies that stuck to the nozzle. And then if you leave that, then it causes further issues later on. So clean that off to give it a fair trial. All right, this sat overnight, so let's just check and see if it did self-release. Okay, it didn't, so that means I probably added a little bit too much mushed into the plate for the self-releasing, but I mean, I just pulled it off, so it's no big deal either way. I'd rather have just a tiny bit too much adhesion that I can still pull off so easily than uh, have trouble with it sticking. Seems to be working comparably to the original print bite, which is great because I love the original print bite. I would have preferred that it also just somehow magically works for the polycarbonate at the lower settings that it's supposed to have for that, but oh well. This is Tech G, and I'm printing a teeny tiny 0.15 scale version of the Felby's head. Gave it kind of a big brand, I wasn't really paying attention. So that's a, that's a large brim for such a small piece, so it's going to be well stuck down, woohoo! This little guy is all done, and he's very well stuck on the bed right now, it's still really hot. So I'm going to let it cool down and see if he self-releases properly. If not, it's my fault, because I know this does self-release really well from the print bite. I just may have, uh, have my settings a little bit too high with regards to the initial layer extrusion, you know, that sort of thing. This is the first layer for a larger version of the Fell Beast. I went back to the black tea glaze just to give that one another go. I've also adjusted the initial layer height to 
0.25 instead of 0.3 since the Techie stuck on a little bit too much and didn't self-release like it's supposed to. I also did not put on a brim this time, so we'll just see how that goes. I mean, obviously the teeth weren't going to come out well, that's fine. But I left it for a couple of hours and it never did self-release. The only thing I can think of is putting the bed temperature lower. So I ended up kind of just having to stick the corner of a spatula on there. It was the only way I could get it off without, you know, damaging the whole entire build plate setup. So that's a little bit strange. I, I can't see changing the layer height or anything anymore because it already had just a tiny bit of trouble sticking with the very first bit. Here you'll see that the skirt isn't quite completely around that's because the first part didn't stick and then it kind of caught on after a minute the changes i've made to this i've made the initial layer height 0.2 we started at 0.3 now um, 0.25 still didn't release so i'm down to 0.2 now also i have switched the bed temperature over to 60 instead of 70. this has been cooling for a while now definitely fully cool and then some uh, oh, and it released excellent so unfortunately the polycarbonate wasn't able to work with the ulti maker not that it doesn't work with print bite it's just i can't bring up my build temp to 110 like it's supposed to be for the pc plus to stick i was hoping you know maybe it might work but no go on that it did a pretty decent first layer and then just came completely off so that's how we ended up with this so no polycarbonate for print bite plus on an ulti maker the glass fiber patchy stuck a little bit too well i needed to revise my settings for that uh, so it does seem like the Print by Plus has a little bit better adhesion even than the old Print by that I was using this one here. That's all scratched up just from all the experimentation and learning how to use it properly. If I were to revise these settings, I'm sure I could achieve the self-release like I finally did for the tea glass. With the Fell Beast again, I just did a small one this time because I didn't really have time to do another big one. And this one did self-release like I barely touched it and it just came right off. So it, it still has a nice first layer it's glassy and smooth not quite as pushed into the build plate as you can see compared to the tech g version which again was over adhered i was using settings that were too extreme for this new sheet of print bite so it was very nice not having to do a brim with this and it stuck really well just have to take the time to find the right settings for the version of print bite that you have and the type of filament that you're using. Of course, I didn't have the bed as hot for this one also. Normally, for petchy type filaments on this old version of Print Bite, including, you know, the damage that I have caused to it just from ongoing use, I would have that on 70 or even higher just to ensure that especially a longer time frame print would stay adhered. But that just is not the case for this nice fresh sheet that's all beautifully smooth and whatnot. So the main thing that I do appreciate about Print Bite is that it is so forgiving if you do make mistakes. I mean, you can see, you know, every little issue I've had here and working with the flexible filaments and not, you know, having those having those pushed into the build plate too much and rip off some bits. Even with all of that, this print surface was working just fine. I didn't even really have to replace it, but just from the ongoing damage, it was starting to get a little bit uneven in some areas. So it's nice to have this fresh sheet of the newest version of the product. And I do really like the design, like the aesthetic changes that have been made to this newer version. I like the grid um, and then I like, you know, just the logos on there. It all looks very professional now and it's uh, definitely moving in the right direction with regards to the design. And then it's just a little bit thinner too. I mean, that's great. But overall, yeah, I continue to be happy with Print Bite, including the Print Bite Plus. It performs as advertised and it's very forgiving if you do make mistakes, as opposed to something like Build Tack, where, you know, one time you mess up and you put your initial layer height a little bit too high or a little bit like too much flow coming out for that first layer or whatever. Once you get that stuck on there, you can't get it off without causing permanent damage to that surface but with the print bite of course ideally you'd like to you know kind of work your way downward as opposed to having your first print stick too much but even with what happened here I mean there's there's no damage to the surface that's on the printer right now it all turned out just fine it's very forgiving of user mistakes in that sense it's a lot more durable than the other products that I've been testing so far so that's it for print bite plus for now it's going to be getting lots of use on the Ultimaker just for every filament that I work with because it, it just is not something that you have to change out depending on the filament other than 
if you're trying to use the polycarbonate. I haven't tested, tested nylons on this one yet. Um, I'll probably do that later on, but with the polycarbonate, unfortunately, the Ultimaker just doesn't get hot enough for it, even with the print bite. So it did seem like it kind of worked with the build tack on a previous video. So I probably need to try it with that again a little more in detail. But I was kind of hoping that the print bite would be, you know, that last little push it needed to stick even at a lower bed temp, but unfortunately, no. But that's all for the print bite, and I'll see you next time. These are printed in cheetah. And I was expecting it to be a little bit overstuck because I didn't even change my settings. I just used whatever I had from the last time I printed them. But they're actually peeling up really, really easily. And yet the backs are nice and flat. So it seems like the new print bite's actually working even better with the cheetah. It's coming off so nicely. Super easy. Really nice print surface here. It's nice and smooth, which is just exactly what I need for these particular pieces. So, excellent.